Hi guys, I'm back at Smash Fishing. We've got a beautiful day, no wind, and we're going mackerel fishing with the pencil floats. So stay tuned, it's Smash Fishing. Woo! What I'm going to be using today is just my really whippy little pen rod, 10 pound line to a 2500 size reel. You can use a 3 4000, it doesn't really matter really light tackle just for a bit of fun and what i'm going to use today is a nice old pencil or cigar floats these are my personal favorites just like that i'm going to quickly show you how i like to set them up it's a really old school way of fishing this but uh it doesn't have work what you need first of all is the good old float stops i personally like these ones because they bite the line very well so you thread it through here and pull your float stop down onto your line and that goes down there and all you need is a bead and that acts as a buffer for the float so we get that on so go float stop bead then your main float make sure the color side is up this way <laughs> you don't want it floating upside down and like I say, this is a very simple way of fishing, but it's very effective for anything really. Garfish, pollock, mackerel. So then we got another bead on there. Any old color would do. And I've got a small, I think this is an ounce lead. Just make sure you've got the right weight for your float and you'll be laughing. So we get that on. Then we've got another bead and this acts as a buffer for your knot and then a small barrel swivel get that on I, I, I usually use either a either a uni knot or a tucked blood knot for this and to be fair those two knots will do most of your fishing so get that tied up beautiful so that's what it looks like at the start You've got your bead on top, you've got your float, bead, weight, bead, and then you've got the good old barrel swivel. And for trace today, I've just got 10 pound line, and I'm gonna do about four feet of trace. I haven't been float fishing like this in a while, so actually looking forward to this. Get that side on. I'll cut all the tag ends off after. And then for the hook, I like to use just a size one Aberdeen and that's all you need you don't need nothing too big or too small the mackerel will eat that with the sand deal pretty easily get that tied on there we go cut all your tag ends off and then that's it ready and uh, what I do with the float stop you got to just adjust it to see where the where the fish are in the water column and once you've got the right height you're laughing you can just keep casting out and hopefully catch some fish Hell yeah, let's get down there. The bait I'm using today, just very small sand eels. I'll probably be cutting these in half. As you can see, that's my little setup. Give you a little closer look here. And that's the float setup. Very simple, very effective as well, especially for pollock and mackerel and the long nose when they come in. So once we get down to the spot, we get fishing. Really looking forward to this. Haven't been float fishing like this and probably I don't know, seven years, eight years. So, fingers crossed we can get a few fish today. We should do. There's a lot of mackerel around at the moment, so it shouldn't be too hard to catch. And I've got the barbie, a few ingredients with me, so we can munch on the bad boys. Just going to set my float stop to about nine feet to start with, just to see where the fish are. There's been a few mackerel caught so far by a couple of lads that are next to me. So, we know they're here. That's the sand deal. Just going to start off with one for a bit all i like to do is go from the tail straight down just like a worm really thread it down and then bring it out the side like so there you go perfect little bait for anything that Let's just get it out there
just switching out to half sand deals now i keep getting little pull downs but i think i think they're just not taking the whole sand deal so it's always worth just get a, a half a sand deal on and often you'll hook up a lot better with a smaller bait with pollock and stuff if there's any pollock around the whole sand deals are definitely better but for mackerel and garfish especially is uh definitely the half pieces First fish of the day. Come on. <laughs> Not, oh, it's off. Looks like a shoal's just come past. Lad next to me just had a string of three. My float keeps popping on the, there we go. Fish on. <laughs> There's definitely a shoal of mackerel come through. Good thing about this light tackle, the mackerel will give you a hell of a fight. Come on. Hopefully we don't lose this one. Beautiful. There you go, guys. One fresh Mackie. That'll be going on the Barbie soon. Hopefully, we can get a few more. Fresh caller mornings. I've got a wet, that's a good note for my sand eels and that because they go mushy. If you just wet your rag in the seawater, it would keep them fresh for a lot longer. And same goes for the mackerel. If you want to dispose of these really quickly, it's a bit cruel, but if you just pull the head back like that, then they're completely dead. It's a lot more humane than just to leave them out dying. Fresh Mackies coming in. Lads are starting to pick up a few now. Must be a big old shoal. <laughs> My float's under the water at the moment. <laughs> Seems to be a lot, a lot of mackerel here. There we go. We got a fish on. Get in. <laughs> They seem to be coming in little flurries at the moment. There we go. Beautiful sized mackerel. Really big ones. There you go, guys. Look at the colours on these fish. Beautiful fish they are. That's all I do, just to wet the rag. Pop it out, there we go. Nice fresh cold water. And that will keep your bait fresh and your mackerel for a long time till you want to cook it. Come on, hell yeah. Really enjoyable this. Just sit around relaxing, catching some mackies. All I'm doing at the moment, I'm not threading it on. Because there's quite a few keep coming through, all I'm doing is hooking it straight through, just like that, and that's enough just to catch them. Some giant shoals of uh, sandbill down there. I was going to say mackerel then, but that's what the mackerel are feeding on. Hence the reason I'm using sandbill as bait today. Matching the hatch. They keep coming around in huge bundles, just swimming around the edge of the rocks. So they like the structure for safety. All of the other lads are gone now. They've had their fill, they must have had about 20 mackerel each. I'm only after about four, I'm just out for a bit of fun today. And we're going to use the heads of these mackerel once we've cooked them. Uh, and go check the grab pot and hopefully we'll come out of a Larry Lobster. Come on you mackie. Just going to clean up my mackerel here guys, I'm starting to get a bit hungry. So all I do is go underneath the fins, from side to side, like so. One side to cut along the top and then along the bottom and you can literally pull the guts out with it and you cut the belly flap and that is it guts didn't come out properly on that one and we'll save that all for the uh, grab pot so nothing will go to waste and you can run your finger on the inside of the uh, spine there and that just takes out some of the bloodline Beautiful. And that's one mackerel ready for the barbie. What I'm going to do, as always, just cut a few little slits in the top here. Beautiful. And that'll be, that will cook nicely in the tin foil. Got a few fresh ingredients for me today. So I'll get that laid in there, get the other one done. 
and we're good to go. We've still got the float out at the moment, so uh, got to keep an eye out. So all I'm doing with these guys, I've got some fresh garlic here, which I'm just gonna put on the sides and all around the fish inside it. And this is all gonna steam straight through both of them. There we go, get a bit inside as well. I don't want too much in this because these are all gonna steam through. And then what I've got, some freshly chopped ginger Gonna get that all round it as well. Beautiful, get a bit inside. And this is gonna create some great flavors going through both of these fish. Then we got the good old Guernsey butter that's half melted, because it's a really hot day today. So a couple of blobs on there, and that is, that is as simple as it is. Just getting a load of garlic, loads of ginger on there, Beautiful. Before I forget, the good old chili flakes. I'm well into my chili at the moment. So I get a nice old bit of that on there. And then when I put the camera down, I'll crack some black pepper on as well. And all of that will cook through nicely. The cooker's nearly ready. My float went under a minute ago, but I couldn't get to the rod in time. So uh, hopefully we can catch a few mackerel while, while these are cooking. So I'm gonna get this all wrapped up now. Like a big old patty with tin foil. Beautiful. And that there will steam nicely on the barbie. My float has rapidly disappeared. Yeah, boy. Feels like quite a good one. <laughs> I was just in the middle of a... Uh, I was just in the middle... Whoa, big mackerel. I was just in the middle of cleaning up all my rubbish. And then shabam, look at that. Lovely sized mackerel there. That's an absolute beauty. But I only need two for me to eat. Look at the size of that one. That's a beautiful sized mackerel. So I just dispatch them quick. There we go. That one's dispatched, that's just nerves now. Get him in the bucket. We need some bait for the crab pot, so that's ideal. There you go guys, that's our little parcel of mackerel there. Two layers of tin foil. It's an idea of that. What I'm gonna do is stick it straight on the barbie. And that's gonna be cooking nicely while we're fishing. Hopefully there's a few more mackies around. Yum! <laughs> Hell yeah! Look at that, guys. That looks delicious. Really nice. Just gonna flake a piece off, and look at that. The whole fillet comes off in one. It's just been steaming in all of the juices with the butter, the uh, the chili flakes. Fantastic. Go for the big taste. That's the meat there. Really chunky fish. It's a few little bones in it, but you can just pop them out, job done. Mm. Oh, steamed in that, um, in the ginger and stuff, and the, uh, and the chili flakes. That makes all the difference. Mm. Can't beat this for a breakfast. Fresh mackerel. It was quite, quite spicy as well. I put a lot of chili on that one. Yeah. And all I'm doing, I got all the juice here, just dipping it in and enjoying it like that. It's quite a strong tasting fish um, mackerel because it's so oily, but with all those just simple ingredients, 
it, it it almost takes away that little fishy taste to it and uh makes it amazing it really does keep looking at my float it's just there <laughs> bobbing around and my rod's just on the edge of the rock here so if it goes under you've got to be careful crispy skin on the bottom because i only cooked this one side you got crispy skin on the bottom and then you got the nice white flaky meat on the top mm. that's what the bone looks like well i'm gonna finish off my breakfast guys so i'll see you back I'm gonna fish for another half an hour or so see if i can get another mackerel the tide's going down a bit now so they tend to push out with the tide so we'll go get the lobster pot if I don't catch and hopefully we can get something cool in there. Hell yeah. Got to dispose. Got to dispose of the rubbish. If you can get it in the bin. I'm at the crab pot now guys sweating out what a trek that is so what i'm gonna do is set the camera up and we get her pulled i might get a bit of a wet welly crossing the rock here but we'll see There we go guys, got one little spider crab, two little spider crab, we've got, what else have we got in here, baby shanker there, and then another little baby spider crab, I think that's it for this run. Hopefully next time, with all this juicy fresh mackerel, we can get something decent. Big old plane coming over there, flying low as well. Size of that. I've got it all baited up now guys, gonna throw it back. Nothing decent in the crab pot today, but a few crabs nonetheless. I needed to rebait it, so we've got some fresh bait in there in the next couple of days. I'll uh, pull it. I won't be able to pull it for at least a couple of days because the tide's just not going to go low enough. So at least it would give it a good soak and hopefully we can come back with a big old Larry in the crab pot. So if you like my channel guys, like and subscribe, there's going to be plenty more to come. It's Smash Fishing! Woo!